Hey, what's up guys? Joel Adams with Iridesium, and today we're going to be taking a look at using force fields to create this pretty cool particle effect. We are going to primarily be focusing on the harmonic force field to be creating this spherical shape in the force field. For the final simulation, I used well over a million particles, and uh, I would suggest you use as many as your computer can handle. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's jump right in and get started. So I will start off by opening up a new scene in Blender. I will hit Shift A to add in a mesh cube, and then I'll scale that along all the axes except for the Y. Then I'm going to go ahead and move this cube to another layer so that the camera and light isn't in our way. I'm going to add a particle system. It's just going to be an emitter, and I'm going to hit Alt-A to just start playing the particles. So the first thing we're going to do is go under Field Weights and turn Gravity all the way off. Then I'll scroll back up, go under Velocity, and set the normal velocity down to zero. Next, I will turn the number of particles up to 5,000 to start out with. The first force field I'm going to add in is the harmonic. Then before changing anything on the force field that we just added in, I'm going to go back to the particles, go under the display tab, and change the display type to velocity. Turn the draw pixel size up a little bit and set it to point, just so that we can see our particles a little better when we are not selected on them. Then I'm going to begin messing with the settings here on the harmonic force field. I will start out by setting the strength to 3 and the rest length also to 3. This is what is going to cause the simulation to take on that spherical or circular shape. Real quick, I'm going to tab into edit mode and add a couple of loop cuts with control R along the X and Z axes of this cube and then just scaling those loop cuts out to give a more circular shape to our emitter object. So then hitting Alt-A you can already see that the particles are being emitted from the cube and then drawn into the center where they rest in sort of a circle shape. The next force field I'm going to add in is a turbulence force field. It looks exactly the same in the viewport as the harmonic force field, so I'm just going to drag it off to the side so we can differentiate between the two. I'm going to set the strength of the harmonic force field up to 6 and then play back the simulation. As you can see, the turbulence field has broken up the perfect circle that the harmonic force field was creating, making it look a little more natural or fluid-like. So next I'm going to go back to the harmonic force field and I'm going to turn the strength down just a little bit so that it doesn't uh, create as perfect of a circle. Then I'm going to go back to the turbulence field and set that to 4 as well. Now I will go back to the particle systems tab on our emitter and I'm going to turn the amount of particles up. I'm going to try 15,000. The more particles you have during your testing process, uh, you know, the better you're going to be able to see the final result before you actually crank the particles up to like a million and then bank it. I'm going to turn the number of particles up to 50,000. So next for the last force field that we're going to add in, I'm going to add in a vortex force field. I just add that in the center of the cube. Rotate it along the x-axis 90 degrees. Then I'm going to hit Alt-A again to see the effect that the vortex field has on the simulation. The vortex field is dragging the particles in uh, towards itself quite a bit. However, it's not spinning them enough, so I'm going to turn it up. You're going to want to get a balance between how much the vortex field pulls the particles in and how much it spins them. So on this vortex field, I'm going to set the inflow value to 8 and then the strength to 4. Next, I'm going to duplicate the harmonic force field just so that the effects of the harmonic force is stronger on the particles. You could turn the values up manually, but I find it easier just to duplicate it. So next, we're going to work on actually rendering the particles. Here I'm going to go under the particle emitter and I'm going to turn the emitter rendering off so that it's just the particles. Then I'm going to hit Shift A and add in a mesh cube. This is going to be our particle. I will add a material to the cube and name it particle as well. Next I'm going to go under the particle simulation. I'm going to select under the render settings object and I'm going to select that particle object we just made. I'm going to turn the size down to 0.2 under the Rendered tab just to make the particles a little smaller. 
Next, I'm going to go into the world settings and turn the background all the way to black. And then I'm going to make sure transparency is off for the render so that we have a completely black scene. Then I'm going to switch my bottom right hand corner screen into a uh, 3D view and I'm going to begin working on the shader for these particles. So anyways, here I am creating the material. I'm just using a particle info node, dividing the age by the lifetime, and uh, using that to color the particles. If you want a more detailed look at shading particles, you can check out the other tutorial I just put up on shading particles. Next, I'm going to turn the particle number from 100,000 up to a million and bake that. Finally, after baking the final simulation with a million particles, we get this. And uh, after rendering out the animation, we get this. And as you can see, it's pretty good and fairly detailed. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I went with quite a bit over a million particles, um, like 1.2 million or something like that for the final render. So um, if I was you, I would go as high as you can. However, if you want the simulation to look like it's of smaller scale, I would use less particles and uh, make the force fields a little more violent and move the particles a little faster. If you want a bigger simulation though, use as many particles as you can and have the particles moving quite slow. So anyways, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you for watching. This is Iridesium. Bye.